Hey everyone, this is Dan. After the last two FOMC meetings, the Fed confirmed their plan to reduce total assets by $47.5 billion each month for the months of June, July, and August. That'll be part of the quantitative tightening process, or QT, for the Fed to control inflation. June just ended a few days ago. Looks like the Fed reduced total assets by only about $1.5 billion for the month of June, which is way short of the $47.5 billion target. What happened? Has the Fed given up and decided to go back to quantitative easing instead of doing quantitative tightening? How would the Fed's QT action or lack of QT action affect our investments? After digging into a lot of data, I found something very interesting. Let's get into the details. This is a table showing the weekly Fed total asset levels in the last two, three months. And the numbers are published by the St. Louis Fed on a weekly basis. As we mentioned a minute ago, that the Fed's plan is to reduce total asset by $47.5 billion a month for the months of June, July, and August. And also, as of June 15, the FOMC increased the Fed funds rate by 0.75%. That's all part of the quantitative tightening process. If you look at the Fed assets for the week ending June 29th, it was at $8.913 trillion level. As of June 1st, it was at $8.915 trillion. That means a reduction for almost the entire month of June was only $1.497 billion, which is very much short of the $47.5 billion target. What happened? Did the Fed give up on QT? I believe I found the answers from this chart, which is a daily chart for the ETF SPY. As you might know, SPY represents the daily movement of the S&P 500. If you look at this particular weekly period ending June 15, the Fed injected a lot of money into the market by increasing total assets to the tune of $14.166 billion. Why did the Fed inject so much money into the market during that week? Now, if you find June 15 on this candlestick chart for SPY, it's right here, this little green candlestick. The five days before June 15, we see five consecutive red candlesticks. And definitely, that was a very bearish sign, especially if you consider these two huge gaps. During the five-day period, the market dropped by about 11%. If you look at this chart ending one day before June 15, you would think that the market was heading for a free fall. And I believe that was what the Fed governors saw as well. And I believe that's why the Fed jumped in and injected money into the market to prevent the market from continuing this free fall. And then sure enough, after money was injected, a couple of days later, the market started to recover. And then finally, the Fed felt comfortable enough for the week ending June 29th to pull out $20.79 billion. June 29th corresponds to this red candlestick here on the chart. And sure enough, when the Fed started to pull money out of the market, the market started to drop a little bit. Does that mean the Fed has given up doing quantitative tightening? No, I don't think so. I believe what happened here during the month of June only indicates that the Fed is concerned about a potential free fall of the stock market. Even though the Fed is going to be tightening the monetary policy, which will cool down the stock market, in other words, what the Fed will be doing will be to bring down the stock market. But I believe the Fed wants to bring down the stock market in a more controlled fashion rather than triggering a major market crash. And that's why they injected money during part of June instead of pulling out $47.5 billion. But I believe long term, unless inflation gets within acceptable range, 
the market will continue to go down because the Fed will continue to do quantitative tightening. If you look at year today, SPY representing S&P 500 has already come down by 20.19%. QQQ representing the movement of Nasdaq 100 has gone down even more at 29.76%. Certainly the market has been going down as the Fed continue to increase interest rates and reduce Fed total assets. So how far would the market drop? I believe we can find some of the answers from this monthly chart for SPY. The RSI indicator is also plotted below this chart. As of last Friday, the RSI value was at 46.7. In the past 30 years covered by this chart, only three out of points in history when we had monthly RSI value lower than today's RSI value. They were in 2001, 2008, and 2020. And of course, you might recognize that in 2001, that's right after the dot-com crash. 2008, that was a great recession triggered by the collapse of the CDO market. And certainly 2020 was a pandemic crash. Now, if you look at the unemployment rates during those three periods, they were at 6.2%, 9.9%, and 14.7%. What's an employment rate today? It's at only 3.6%. And that's why I believe the Fed will continue to let the market go down in a controlled fashion rather than in a quick crash in order to control inflation. And as long as the unemployment rate is within an acceptable range, the Fed will continue to engineer these market drops every once in a while until the inflation is within an acceptable range. So when will the market recover? Of course, when the Fed stops raising interest rates and stops quantitative tightening, the market will recover. But when will the Fed do those? First of all, I believe CPI has to be less than 5%, even though the goal for CPI, according to the Fed, is 2%. But as long as CPI can get within 5%, the Fed will declare short-term victory and think that there's enough downward momentum on the CPI that they will then ease up on quantitative tightening then the market will have the chance to recover. Or the other scenario, which is not very desirable, is if the unemployment rate is higher than 6%, because with a high unemployment rate, then the Fed will be worried that in order to solve one problem, which is related to inflation, they might have triggered another problem, which is high unemployment. At that point, with high unemployment rate, the Fed will certainly slow down the tightening process in order to increase employment in the economy. And then after employment gets within a reasonable range, then the Fed might continue to tighten if the inflation is still very high at that point. Overall, I believe the market will continue to trend down in the next two, three months because inflation is still nowhere near the target range yet. The other possibility is that if the Ukraine war can come to an end in the next few months, then certainly there will be a recovery of the stock market. But it might be brief, especially if after a couple of months, if the inflationary rate is still very high, then of course the Fed will still have to continue to tighten in order to bring down inflation. But at least at the end of the Ukraine war, we can see a brief rebound of the stock market. If you want to read more details about my analysis on this topic, please refer to the video I posted on June 20th, which you can find on my YouTube channel. At this point, I'd like to remind you to also subscribe to my Twitter account, which is DanMarketL. With my Twitter account, I share almost on a daily basis some of my trades with my subscribers. For example, on June 7th, I tweeted that I bought SQQQ, the inverse ETF pegged to the NASDAQ 100. And three days later, I sold half of the SQQQ share at 14% gain. If you like what you've seen so far, I'd like to encourage you to click the like, subscribe, and notification button. That'll allow you to receive notification when I post my next video. It'll also encourage me to make more videos like this in the future. As usual, I very much welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions. I'd like to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. I share my stock trading strategies and analyses for educational and entertainment purposes only. 
if you want to buy or sell stocks, you should make your own decisions and you should definitely consult with your financial advisors before you do so. This wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck with your financial investments.